lost in the ether. Oh, it's okay. We were all being racist anyways. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, as best it's not on the record. <clears throat> yeah, especially Jacob. Can't believe you said the N word seventeen thousand times in a row. That was really Damn. hard. Yeah, nuts. The word nuts. Anyway, you know, I like my racism and my uh, slightly offensive <laughs> words. <laughs> like to your coffee come together. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I like I like my race is like my coffee. <laughs> <clears throat> fast and efficient like so I can win the race wait what are you talking about what right, What type of races are you talking about wait a minute I got anyway. a question yeah go for it so to, to I think the thing to say segue off of the earlier conversation that we lost um <laughs> We're talking about. We'll never Facebook. lose it. It's always internalized. Yeah, internalized just just for the, those watching the recording, we were talking about um, talking about facial structures um, and the subtleties and differences. What I want to ask uh, off of that is, which method do you go to when trying to do a face? Because in Proko's videos, he just he just went over the Loomis method. Oh yeah, Is yeah. that what you're using right now, or what method are you yeah. using? And the follow-up question after that is. Since you don't tend to do line drawing, how would you em employ whatever method to painting it straight up? Yeah, so like you got to remember that. Oh, wait, what? Are you done? I'm done. Are you, are you, are you done? Right, Calm good. down, dude. I'm formulating <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> you got to remember that I, um, I don't normally... Uh, I don't normally draw in lines, but it doesn't mean that yeah. I don't think in lines. That's what I was going to say is you think in lines while you're painting. Yeah. Cause I learned that while I was doing my studies. It's like, Oh, you can anyway. Yeah. Well, I, like, I started learning here, that. Here's a better way of thinking about it. Like, it might be more accurate to what's okay. going on. I don't think in, in, in lines or, or some sort of arbitrary thing. I, I think in shapes, right. And whether I get those shapes via line or just straight up blocking them in, it's, it makes no difference. Right. And so that's why I don't oppose people who do lines. In fact, I encourage it. You should have some, some strong sense of doing some line art. Um, and I, I don't mean like in a sense where you're like perfect at it, right? Like some of the people who are masters at line art, but rather that you're really good at like finding shapes and forms. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the best way of thinking about all this. And so the Andrew Loomis way is a really, so, so going back to this problem that I was talking about, and I think I was talking about it with um, uh, Victor, right? Where, you know, you really want to think about it like this. You really want to be put into a position where you're really thinking about um, like all of the, the different pieces and parts that are going to make you better at drawing in the the, reason, the most reasonable situations you're going to be put in. Because you're never gonna know exactly what to do in every example that it's gonna have, like every moment to moment that's going to happen to you, right? So like, if you draw like a Andrew Loomis head, like I was talking about before, right? And then you're asked to then design multitudes of different like races of people, right? Or ethnics, ethnicities of people, I think that makes more sense. I think races means like the actual human race, which is, I think, I think that's always kind of throw me off because isn't what people really meant is like, eth like being ethnic or the ethnicity of somebody, but I guess it's not as sexy to call somebody an ethnicist or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's much more sexy to call someone a racist, right? But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm just, I'm just concerned that you called that sexy. <laughs> <laughs> this is this ethnicity. yeah but but to get back on the to get off this tangent and get back on the one time yeah is um you know like to draw different ethnicities uh doing the andrews loomis method is, is not going to help you right you know what i mean like it, it's, it's there's not enough information there to help you just all of a sudden just draw people of color 
or of different different cultures, right? Like you're not gonna all of a sudden now know how to draw Asian people if you can draw the Andrew Loomis method, right? Um, but what you what you can learn from that is how to just draw a basic structure of a human head and skull, right? That is useful. You see my point? And so so the Andrew Loomis method is clearly not enough, right? So you have to like do more research. And it was like what I was telling Victor, it's not so much about learning just one thing really good. It's about understanding a multitude, like a multitude of angles of that specific subject. That's where the value is, you know? That's gonna allow you to be able to design or paint or whatever you're looking to do in a more uh, effective way. Uh, a good example of this is like, let's imagine that you're in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? And you learn how to do the arm bar really well. Like you've mastered the arm bar, right? Um, like you can uh, do a really mean arm bar, uh, but only in the context that someone is in the right specific position to be put into arm bar, right? So then you go to a competition or to a meet where you have to wrestle other people or compete against other people who know how to, you know, get out of an armbar or to prevent an armbar rather. It's pretty hard to get out of an armbar once you're in it, right? That's kind of the point. Um, but they can, they can uh, evade it. That's what I'm trying to get at. And so uh, you go against somebody, let's say, uh, who's really good at getting away from getting into the armbar, right? They're literally your, your, your greatest enemy, you know, in terms of this specific, like, specific thing. Uh, but the difference is that this person understands how to then um, like take this like momentum that you were going to put them into an arm bar and use it against you, right? Like that's what they know. Like they, like they know how to do this specifically because they've trained us. This is, but this isn't their greatest strength. Maybe they're really good at doing some other move that I just don't know. I don't know enough about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to, to name another move. But I don't think you don't. I don't think you need to know the the specifics to understand the point I'm making here, right? And and so then when this person wrestles this other person, right? They they eventually uh, they eventually lose, right? Because they try to go for the armbar. This person's like, oh great, like I know how to like this person's doing everything out of the book. It doesn't matter that that person happens to be the best armbar person ever, right? Like has perfect form when like um, putting someone in armbar because putting someone in an arm bar is the is the perfect opportunity to counter for this other opponent and so the person counters this person the the, the guy loses you know and is now like you know questioning everything about what they've done and it's it's not that they should do this right it's that they should learn more moves right they should learn how to avoid this like maybe do a, a double fake out like i'm gonna arm bar you it's like and it's not a real arm bar and then they go into a transitional move, right? Um, and if you look at really good Brazilian jiu-jitsu, uh, this is kind of the thing, right? Like really good Brazilian jiu-jitsu demonstrates a quality of like understanding a multitude of moves and counters and positioning and feeling out the strength of your opponent, learning how to weigh like the odds, you know, and leveraging, right? And learning all these different ways to attack, these different ways to maneuver in a realistic setting, right, of combat, specifically in the combat of like jujitsu, right? Um, you you are more prepared for this dynamic situation that you don't know what's going to happen next, right? Uh, and this is why there's like this really huge popularity in like kind of like unraveling this this fake ideology of martial arts being like a real thing you know like when we watch a movie like it man we like to believe that there might have been a person who could have just fought a hundred people you know with just the power of kung fu or whatever right uh but you know there's been people that have been demonstrating that no like kung fu is super old and not really practical right um it's actually not that good of a, a martial arts right and there was a, there was a really fascinating YouTube video that demonstrated this. There was an MMA fighter who, again, MMA fighting is like the mixture of boxing, kickboxing, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. 
And all three of these uh, fighting styles require a dynamic understanding of fighting, meaning you have to be prepared to get punched because you're not going to block them all. You have to be prepared for the kinds of punches that would come from a, a potential street fight almost, right? Like you could fight somebody on the street with the skill and knowledge that you have, right? You know what I mean? Because that's, that's pretty good, especially if you're not out to kill somebody. That's pretty helpful uh, versus like something like I think Krav, Krav Maga which is like, it's all about killing their opponent, right? Like, oh, the person, if this person's about to do this specific thing, you go straight for their nuts, you bite their nuts off, you know? It's like, it's like real practical, uh, even though it feels like dirty, but it is pretty practical to try to rip someone's nuts off <laughs> to win a fight, you know what I mean? Um, and so, but like in, a, in a, like a street fight, you know, you're not aiming to kill somebody, you're just trying to like beat them up, right? So it makes sense that mixed martial arts is a really good fighting skill. Like it's a great skill to learn. And the whole point about all of this is that, that like when this MMA fighter fought like, you know, like a Wing Chun champion, like this Wing Chun champion usually fights against other Wing Chun people who only practice under this really contained and sterile environment. And when he's finally challenged, he got his ass whooped. You know what I mean? Because this person actually didn't know how to fight. He just knew how to like dance, if that makes sense. And so bringing that full circle to like painting, it's the same thing, right? Like, so if you only know this kind of contained dance, if you will, of like drawing a, a structural head in a very structural way, when you're asked to do it in a, in a dynamic situation, like I mentioned earlier with like the more of the ethnic, like understanding of the, the character you're gonna draw, you're gonna feel trapped, right? And, and you're going to feel like a sense of like, why did I learn all this stuff? Probably like the guy that learned Wing Chun when he got punched in the face on the ground, you know? And it's, it's very clear to me that like when that happened to me, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to have like this kind of like uh, structural understanding, not because like that's what you should do because that's what all the pros do, but it's like it will allow me to be prepared for all these multitude of situations. Uh, I learned like ZBrush and like 3D Coat not to be a good 3D artist, but to be able to construct and to make a multitude of um, a multitude of like designs using multitudes of techniques, specifically for character design. Right, I'm still focused on the character stuff, you know, and that that was where I was really putting my time and attention to. So I learned from Loomis, but I also learned from Bridgman, who teaches you a lot about being more dynamic. You know, so dynamic that in one of his art books, Teaching Anatomy, he had like uh, the left left foot on the right leg. <laughs> you know, like this is like a a seasoned veteran, like illustrator, cons or not cons, or like anatomy artist, teaching people around the world how to draw anatomy more effectively. Uh, drew the wrong foot on the wrong leg, you know? Uh, th there was some rumor that he was a super crazy drunk too, so he might have been drunk when he did that, but who knows, you know? But his drawings are so dynamic, it's not that easy to catch, right? You had to kind of look for it. Uh, but it was really helpful. But obviously, if I want for accuracy, it's not the best place to go. So then I'll go to books like um, Anatomy for an Artist, which is a lot more accurate. You know, it's not beautiful looking anatomy, right? It's not like the kind of anatomy you would see in like a comic book, you know, that's really well designed. Or Andrew Loomis. Andrew Loomis is more approachable, right? It's more approachable an anatomy. It helps me kind of take the next step. But then when I wanted to get serious, I took, I took a look at that other book I was just mentioning, Anatomy for an Artist, right? And then that helped me. And then I was like, okay, but now I need to like, like, but like every time I draw my anatomy, all my characters look kind of like too kind of sterile, you know? And so then I was like, okay, well, I, what else do I have to look at? So then I started looking at, um, uh, like I was saying, like comic book anatomy, like, cause they do their anatomy really good. So I used to look at people like Ariel Olivetti, I forget how to say his name. Um, or like people even now, it's still around like, uh, Ryan Minerding you know, who has really fascinating and dynamic character designs and his anatomy and stuff was really great, especially the stuff he did for old school stuff like God of War. And, and so then I started to look at like people who drew um, really cool characters, like, uh, like uh, very like exaggerated, uh, like um, James Scott Campbell or 
I don't, I don't think it's James. I think it's J. Scott Campbell. <laughs> and then, and then I started finding people who are a little bit more realistic, but they still found a way to draw beautiful people, which would be like, uh, and Adam Hughes and, uh, people that he was inspired by, like Alfonso Mucha or Mucha. I don't know how to pronounce that name either. Right. But then I started getting into painting and then I was like, okay, well, I need to like learn how to paint really good anatomy. So then I started looking at people like Phil Hale and see how he handles it. And so then eventually I got to the point where I have like a lot of systems, a lot of like, if we would go back to the fighting analogy, I have a lot of understanding of how to do like on my feet boxing, shadow boxing. I know how to, to do combos as well as, um, take hits. I know how to do kickboxing. So I know how to sweep the leg. I know how to block and deflect these types of things. I know like, if it gets to the mat, like if we take it to the ground, I know how to, to get out of those situations or get into those situations if I wanted to. Right. I am not just the best arm bar person. You know, I know how to do multiple ways of, of engaging a fight. And in, in back to art, it's like I have multiple ways of engaging a piece of painting you know? And so, uh, watching Proko is really good to understand just the, the fundamentals of a very specific thing, you know? And I'm doing the same thing in programming, right? I'm doing the same thing. I learned how to do Unreal and Unity and JavaScript. Uh, and it's become very clear to me that I learned different techniques like i like the way that unreal handles their um their their logic but i liked how unity is really in like intuitive to learn some more hardcore coding but it's, it's a lot easier to make a game because of the way it's object oriented but i love javascript because it's so forgiving as a writing like a coded language and it's constantly evolving for the better because the web is like the most popular thing now right and then i love construct 3 because of it's so so easy to just jump right in and make a game right especially a 2d game right it is crazy easy and but their logic is is hidden behind closed doors you know what i mean and and so i started realizing like like the value of learning all these different engines isn't so much just to be a really good person to make multiple engines. I really just want to stick to web games, right? I still think that's something I really enjoy. Um, but what I realized is that learning how these different engines and different codes, I was learning coding paradigms and algorithms and logic that transcends each of these tools. And I realized that I should keep learning this stuff, you know? I should keep learning paradigms and tool uh, coding. Like uh, for instance, I'm learning how to do tweens and I'm learning tweens from basic mathematical equations as well as like what equations were invented and developed by um, old school flash programmers, right? Remember that thing called flash? Because that information is still useful even if nobody uses flash anymore, right? Just like that left foot on the right leg is not useful, but how he drew that left foot was pretty damn useful. You know what I mean? And uh, if you think about drawing portraits or anything that you do in this context uh, of like, okay, if I'm looking to get all the information from one artist, uh, basically what AJ has told me is that is incredibly foolish, right? And that I should learn from a multitude of artists and try to expand my knowledge. And if, if I want to get a very specific look, then I need to find answers from artists who achieve some of that look. They don't need to have all of it, right? Like uh, Andrew Loomis, Proko, they don't have all the answers on how to draw amazing portraits, right? But they have a lot of good information on how to do so, you know? And it's not, in, it's not like garbage not to look at it. It's actually really helpful to look at it. But it is also really smart and helpful to understand where their limits end and to move on. I always say, you know, whenever I look at a painting, I, 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 I tend to try to look at what's the best part of the painting, not at the worst, where I find like a lot of my peers do the opposite. They usually tend to find the flaws in other people's paintings or like other work. You know, we were talking about like the Sonic movie, people immediately find what's wrong with Sonic, even though the movie hasn't come out, the trailer hasn't been dropped. They immediately wanted to say what's wrong with the movie without knowing anything about the movie, right? 
where I'm like saying, okay, well, what's good about this sonic design? Is there anything good about it, right? And if so, what what is it that is good about it? And what do I like about it? And what can I take from that that I can add? And then, you know, we can obviously talk about what's wrong with it as well, but uh, I like to try to find the things that are working and, and the things that are doing well. And then understanding then, maybe from from that perspective why the other things might not work as well right understanding the context understanding the full picture gives me a much broader picture like uh we were talking in our stream chat the other day about like this whole stuff that was going on in blizzard and then even canon was kind of like yeah i mean people don't realize like it's really hard to keep and maintain a lot of income for large companies and you know you and i have talked about this mike right even in yeah. one of the streams and that's because of the wisdom of me being in the industry, me owning my own business, right? Like I have all these different perspectives that I've experienced from people that I've talked to, like people that I've met. It made me realize that there's like a lot more dynamic things moving. There's a lot of moving parts that than corporate shilling, right? Like, oh, they're totally being bought out by Activision, you know? It's like, it might not be that simple. It might be actually more clear, like uh, they're just not making as much money and they just got to make some choices. And I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked of the choices that they made because it made me realize that Blizzard really is still a company for the people because instead of like laying off people, they just moved them around, right? Because if the game is not making money, like I told you, there's, you only really have a couple options. And one option most people get really outraged about, like if you make changes to the game that they love, right? Even though it's a sinking ship anyway, right? Uh, or the other one, which is per my preferred one, because it gets the less backlash, right? Is the one that you just fire people. And it's the one that hurts the most for me because uh, a lot of people are usually my friends, you know? But it's the one that will maintain the culture the best, right? Because making changes uh, in the other way is usually going to uh, slowly but surely change the whole culture and dynamic of the studio. And if you want to maintain that, uh, downsizing is the solution, right? And it sucks, but it's just the reality of it. Bad management early on uh, could have, or good management early on could have prevented it, but nobody can foresee the future of everything, you know? That's why I think Epic Games is so smart to realize that, yeah, uh, you know, Fortnite's not going to always be awesome, <laughs> you know? So we're going to like try to like take all this extra billions of dollars that we would have normally never had and just kind of like leverage this. And even with all the lawsuits that are coming out uh, against them, uh, I think they'll still be all right. They still have so much money, you know? And, and it's like, and once this uh, Epic store goes live in, in, a, in the real sense, like in the next two years or so, um, I think it's gonna it's gonna give Steam a run for their money, but we'll see. But like getting back to my point is that like you know there's more dimensions to everything, and understanding all those multiple dimensions makes you better at the very specific craft that you want to get good at, you know. And and that's just kind of like a long winded answer to that question they answered. But I just wanted to kind of give you a foolproof way of thinking about this. Pretty um, much, don't rely on one method. <laughs> yeah 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 and, it, and it's just a really insightful understanding of why you shouldn't do that right i, I mean i'm sure i've said this i actually have said this in a very simpler term right of just like yeah just like especially when it comes to style i've always said that you should just focus on like having different uh a lot of different influences you know but I've seen now like that there's an even more pragmatic reason why you should do that because it makes you more adaptable with your own style, you know? And so, yeah, yeah you, you should definitely learn from a multitude of references. That's, that is becoming more of my answer to this question. Yeah. I like, uh, like as a little bit of a side note, but related, I like how Tabiso does his uh, character faces. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I want to ask him as well. Yeah, like that. he definitely gets a lot of influences from places like Massive Black. So, uh, you might want to start from where he might get his references from. That's a good strat. Like, go to your know. inspirations, inspirations. Yeah. That's why I, I used to do it a lot. I was like, well, okay, if this person is super dope to me, who do they think is super dope? I just, I know, uh, 
I mean, among other things, but one of the things I've avoided is focusing on human likeness and like just humans in general. Everything that I paint when you ask me is like some sort of monster because I'm hiding right from uh, what I know I'm not good at. And that's oh, yeah. not, I, but... <laughs> <worst nightmare. laughs> yeah, I um, I get uh, I get comments sometimes too about like, hey, where's the hands, dude? You never draw hands. And um, and I'm like, yeah. Robots don't have to have hands. Yeah, I don't. I don't need to draw hands. You're not the boss of me. You're just trying to find the chink in my armor, and I'm like, until, it's right here. Actual boss. <laughs> Ask me. Oh, then I just draw hands. It's not hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it I is know, hard just, to draw I'm, hands. That's a joke. Like, you're it not is the boss hard to draw hands because yeah. hands are like a whole. Uh, it's like another body. Yeah. Because hands, um, we use hands to express uh, communication to one another. So, like, hands are like one of those other things that you need to get right really well. Oh yeah. Um, and that's and they're why so complicated. Like, no matter what angle they're at, they look different just because their shapes are so unique. Every shape of the hand. Yeah. So I usually approach hands like I draw. I just, it's like I draw another human, like a, another thumbnail, but just for the hand. If that makes sense. Well, that's and interesting. So, looking at it. Yeah, and uh, but it, that's only if I'm asked to draw hands. Otherwise, I don't worry about it because. Because hands are usually rarely, you know, like they're rarely a, a detail that needs to be refined from a concept artist position. Uh, I think you should still refine them, uh, especially when you're building your portfolio. But uh, yeah, I mean, like it's just like because it's just a hand, you know. Right. They know what hands look like. Yeah. Or, or there's plenty of references, including the ones that are attached to the actual modeler, who's about to model the hand that you you didn't draw, you know. And um, but like the costuming and the design of the the armor, uh, even faces are pretty important to kind of get right, uh, because you can essentially design like a, a person you've casted to play this character's role. If that makes sense, uh, that could be part of your overall design. So having good ability to draw faces is is pretty pretty standard. But a hand, they're very rarely going to be like a unique looking hand from another person's hand. You know, most hands are pretty similar, uh, unless you are literally drawing a design where they require you to to design like a different person. Like this hand is is different. They have four fingers, two thumbs. You know, like okay, so I need to like design that. You know, like that's something that the modeler is not going to be able to just kind of figure out. And so, um, yeah, I understand the whole hiding your weaknesses thing. Um, yeah, I do it all the time as well. But I've gotten so good at designing to hide my weaknesses that people don't even notice it anymore. I notice them, but I know nobody else does, so I just keep on moving on with my life. Uh, yeah. Right Any right other on. questions? I'll take uh, one more question. We'll call it a day. It's getting late. I'm getting sweaty. No? I mean, we can, uh, we can uh, look at the, the, all the images. Nope. For a different time. <laughs> oh, and I wouldn't mind. Nope. Don't you interject with your kindness. <laughs> Jacob. I, know, I learn a lot from what you just talking to other people too. Like, should be. Nope. Nope. I'm going to rip him a new one. <laughs> I don't <laughs> well, want you guys to Did you want to do it like a, a, at a mystery. different time? Uh, I do, actually, because it's a little bit later today. That's why I, I'm actually. Um, looking to and mondays are, are are there's a reason why i don't like to do classes on monday this is one of those exceptional days because of the the keep on moving the schedule around thing you know mm -hmm. but i, I just want right. to go relax and so because uh because i work from home i have a different schedule than most folk like sometimes i uh i use monday and uh tuesday is my days off kind of thing um 
where I use my weekends as my, uh, my days that I work because I teach Wednesday and Friday, right? And then usually I try to submit client work and stuff that I do for freelance on Mondays and Tuesdays. And so the weekends, I usually try to get a good head start on all that, you know? Okay. Does that make sense? And then so then when Wednesday rolls around, I usually, um, uh, it feels like I'm starting the work week, if that makes sense. Yeah. But it's like, I feel like the work week has been extended another day, <laughs> if, that, if that makes even more sense. It's, well, it's so, not too big of a deal. I just feel, I just feel weird. I just want to, I just want to lay down. And so uh, if we can move it to another day, that'd be better. Okay. Well, do you want me to send you a message or do you want to send me a message? Or oh, yeah. Do do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Either or. What, what day would work best for you? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We'll get sorted out later. But we'll get it done. The deed will be done. All right. I'm going to stop it here. Thanks, folks. It's yeah. been a pleasure. It's been an honor. I am very happy with uh, the results of the class. You guys are great. Keep up the good, good work. Don't be strangers. Hang out with each other. Try to encourage each other outside of the class. And uh, you guys can always message me from time to time. I'm always around. If I don't get to you right away, uh, no offense. Um, I just sometimes don't message. Um, but I usually try to get back to everyone. Uh, if not, just keep on bugging me until I do. And so with that being said, y'all, take care. Have a great, happy holidays. I'll see you guys soon, or I'll, I'll probably see you next year. Latest right friends, on, peace out. See you guys. All right. Good see you guys. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.